Hi folks, my name's Adam and I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. You see, last week I made the much beloved Man Spider and this week I'm going to continue assembling my team of super weird heroes starting with the other famous bug related superhero, Man Ant. Man Ant of course is portrayed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe by fellow sexiest man alive Ron Paul, seen here fitting what one can only assume is a single fingered forearm into his mouth. Remember that, since it'll be important later. For now though, let's get to building his body starting with his bones. I'm making his bones out of armature wire and aluminium since I can only assume Paul's bones are made out of aluminium as well, since aluminium doesn't rust and from what I can tell, neither does Paul, so as far as I'm concerned that's really the only explanation. Once I've got the shape of his front part and back sack formed in foil, I can wrap three long strips of armature wire around the body and cinch them tight, which will leave me with six equally sized legs, which I can then measure and wrap in an even thinner gauge of wire. The super fine wire helps future clay adhere to the otherwise smooth surface and a couple dollops of CA glue will help keep the wire from moving around. I can then completely disregard the measurements I made earlier in black marker and bend the limbs into whatever position I think looks fine. Otherwise with that done the skeleton is finished which means it's time to add some skin. I've mixed up a batch of pasty pale pink skin tone with a batch of translucent clay to give me an even paler pale fleshy look to begin with, which I'll just squish all over Paul's body covering both the front and back sack. I'll then add some ant aesthetic lines to his back sack to create some ant-like segments that once they've been smoothed out I can get to work making the ample buttocks that you would expect to see on the sexiest man ant alive. Now I really wanted to make this a sexy scene cause you know butt cheeks but I don't want to get a copyright strike so please enjoy me singing the careless whisper sax in the background. Once Paul's posterior has been perfected, I can start to break his upper half into halves to create two halves of the upper half which will become a double pair of rib cages which I can make by wrapping the top in a bunch of noodles of clay that then get blended and smoothed out. I'll then divide this down the middle so I can fit a whole bunch of vertebrae which will end just above the butt back segments. I've also decided that it would be a good idea to give him little back dimples to remind you that this is a very attractive ant. The vertebrae can get blended and smoothed out to make it look like they're pressing against the surface of the skin and I can get started making his midsection. Now Paul's a man who's an ant which means I need to make sure that there's plenty of man anatomy on display so I figured since he's gonna have arms and hands he should probably have a very strong set of six pecs. After all if you were to spend your entire life walking around with just your arms you'd probably end up with a pretty impressive chest as well and it's really important to me that this sculpture be as anatomically correct as possible. Which of course means he needs a matching set of teeny tiny man ant nipples. I also figured that if his mesosoma is his chest and his metasoma is his butt then the little section in the middle must be his belly and again being the sexiest man alive I've decided to give him a six pack worthy of a superhero. Otherwise once man ant has achieved a body that is frankly unattainable and perpetuates an unrealistic standard of beauty I'll start to add lots of little lines between his ribs and around the remaining surface of his body to add some texture to his otherwise too smooth skin. Finally the body is finished and ready for a little walk down to the oven to bake it and lock the detail in place. Once it's come out of the oven and cooled down I can drill a couple holes for the head support tube and then make said head by wrapping an adequately sized lump of aluminium in another layer of clay. Once the shape is kind of humanoid looking I can skewer it on my twin spinal spikes then add lots of little lumps of clay to build out the neck and since this is a man ant I'll make sure to give him one of my apples. To make his eyes I'll start with a couple little divots that I'll then expand to the point that I think I've gone too far then make them a tiny bit bigger so I can fit some appropriately sized egg shaped eyeballs in place. I'll refine the shape around the eyes by pressing the clay up and out then I can wrap each eye in a long wormy dealy that gets blended in to make the occipital casing. I also thought it was looking a bit too bug like so you'll notice I gave him a little nose in the meantime. Now an ant has a set of pincers and a person generally has a set of teeth so I figured to make man ants mouth I'd make a totally reasonable amalgamation of the two. So once I've opened up the mouth and added some texture to the inside I can squish a little length of translucent clay onto the ball stylus then poke and strategically prod with a variety of tools until I've got a close approximation of what a row of teeth should look like. 
I can then bake it on the ball with my heat gun and it's ready to be pressed into place on the side of Paul's mouth. Another row of teeth on the other side will complete my man and teeth pincers, so all I need to do is add a bit of detail to the surrounding lips and gums and stick a tongue in place. And with that, Paul's perfectly fine man ant mouth is finished so I can refine the shape of his nose and poke some breathing holes into the bottom. I'll then add some detail and texture through a combination of wrinkles and skin folds, then a pair of ears get pressed in place on the sides of his head and it's finally time to add his antennae. Now my ant related anatomy is a bit rusty, but to my knowledge ant antennae are used predominantly to poke stuff, so really they're just like extra long fingers, which is what I ended up making. I'll then wrap each of his limbs in a length of clay until I've got six lovely little arm legs which I'll then blend into the underside. I also realized that his pecs were a bit underwhelming so I'll take a bit of time to improve and refine the shape and, of course, ensure that his man and nipples are still very clearly visible. I'll then reshape the legs so that they're actually big thick fingers with knobbly knuckles. Then I can add lots of little wrinkles and folds around the bent sections as well as plenty of wrinkles along the tops of the knuckles. Some quick and dirty texturizing will make my finger look a little more natural and I can get to work making that Paul Rudd appropriate single fingered forearm that I mentioned way back at the start of the video. I'll then repeat this process five more times for each finger and add some wrinkles on the top and that's Paul's man ant finished and ready for a glow up. Using a sponge I found in the bathroom and a little makeup bag, I'll give Paul a heavy dusting of even lighter, nearly white tones to add a bit of color variation and implied recess shading. I then cut up one of these sponges to make an even smaller sponge for those hard to reach places. I'm going to be giving Paul a fake tan to make him look healthy and sun kissed but before I do that I'll cover his eyes and teeth in sticky tack so I don't have to worry about repainting them after. With that done I can crack out my airbrush and give him a full once over with a darker reddish pink wash to give him his final coloring. Now to make his nails look like nails I'll use a cotton bud soaked in alcohol to clear away the paint revealing the lovely shiny nail beneath. Finally, a full body blast with a satin varnish will both protect the paint beneath and give Paul a lovely slimy appearance and I can peel the sticky tack coverings off to reveal his pearly whites ready for paint. I'll then barely brush the teeth with a nice bright white to make them stand out a bit against the sun-kissed color of his skin, then a bit of red wash around the gums and lips as well as the eyes will add a bit of contrast between the teeth and the lips and the eyes and the eyelids. I'll then mark out where I want the centers to be with black before using a sponge to make my rough irises which I'll then refine the shape of with a series of progressively lighter greens. I'm going with green eyes because in my cursory research I'm pretty sure Paul Rudd has green eyes as well. Finally a big black pupil in the center and that's the eyes mostly finished but before I add the layer of gloss I need to add some hair which I'm gonna do by using this brownish static grass. I'm just going to use a spray adhesive to attach the hair but I don't want Paul's entire body covered so I'm going to build him a little body bib using cling film with cutouts wherever I want the hair to fall. Then I can blast it with my adhesive and layer the static grass on top. Once the cling film is removed I'm left with a delightfully hairy little man ant body. Then a little vacuum will clean up any stray hairs as well as help the adhered hairs to stand a little taller. I've got this stiff bristled brush that I forgot to clean up after using a varnish so it's too stiff to actually use anymore but once I cut the tip off it, it should work wonderfully for making his hairy armpits. Once the glue's dried I can do a little ant manscaping and trim them back a bit so they're not quite so bushy. Finally the last thing left to do is give his eyes a healthy coating in UV resin to make them nice and shiny. And that's us finished here and on to the glamour shots.
As always, I'd like to take a minute to thank my stinking delightful patrons over on Patreon, as well as give a quick shout out to the newest of them, Eleanor, Zach Haynes, Olivia Douglas, NB98, Maddie Griff, Knight, Snip Art, KSCJTV, Andrew Ewell, Sleepy Chan, Anna Kath VD, Nile Bayer, Shayna Campbell, Technic Dragon, Chi Chi Ace, Uncle Mr. Bones, Lacey Sutton, Kate Mokadam, and Happy Birthday Liam. You are the sweaty, pale skin onto which this hairy, static grass of a channel stands upright. I don't know anything about Paul Rudd, and I wouldn't presume to make assumptions about his likes and dislikes, but I bet he'd appreciate this rendition of Man Ant. So if you happen to know him on a first name basis, then I'd appreciate it if you let him know about this video. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.